Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the academic procession and the Chancellor. the 602nd Convocation of McMaster University for the conferring of degrees is now in session. Please be seated. <clears throat> I am Dr. Maureen McDonald, Dean of Science. It's my privilege and pleasure on behalf of McMaster University to welcome all of you, graduates and guests, to this convocation ceremony. I would like to start by recognizing and acknowledging that we meet today on the traditional territories of the Mississauga and Haudenosaunee nations and within the lands protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. I would also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge some of the notable leaders joining me on stage today. Our Chancellor, Suzanne Labarge, President and Vice Chancellor, Dr. Patrick Dean, Provost and Vice President, Academic, and today's Master of Ceremonies, Dr. David Farrar, Vice President, Administration, Mr. Roger Caldry, Vice President, Academic Advancement, Ms. Mary Williams, Vice President Academic of Mohawk College, Dr. Paul Armstrong, Dean School of Health of Mohawk College, Ms. Lori Kozial, Associate Deans, Directors, Chairs, McMaster and Mohawk faculty members, and honored guests. Before we start our for formal program, may I ask everyone in the hall to switch off any electronic device that may ring be or beep during the ceremony. 
So here you are. Welcome to your McMaster Faculty of Science Convocation Ceremony. You and your fellow graduates all came from diverse backgrounds and you entered a variety of programs, half of which are represented here this morning. You took lots of different courses and I'm sure had very unique experiences during your time at McMaster. Yet, there is one communal experience you all shared. And it wasn't deciding whether you had enough time to wait in line at Starbucks or Tim Hortons between classes. Your other shared experience was engaging in the scientific method. By now, you should be very familiar with this method. I'd give you a chance to talk to your neighbor about it, and I'm sure you come up with all seven stages, but I'll review them for you. Those are make an observation, conduct research, form a hypothesis, test that hypothesis, record data, draw a conclusion, and then replicate. I'm going to let you in on a secret. You lived that scientific method from the time you applied to McMaster to this very moment. And I hope the scientific method continues to serve you as your framework for what I'm sure will be a remarkable lifetime of learning, experimentation, and discovery. Here's how the scientific method played out during your time at McMaster. We made an observation that each of you was interested in per pursuing science education, engaging in research. We did research on you, and through the application process, we formed a hypothesis. Then we tested that through assignments, lab reports, and, and exams, and we recorded lots of data on you. Today, we draw one very specific and irrefutable conclu conclusion from this grand experiment. Our conclusion is that you are all scientists. You have learned how to conduct and evaluate science, and you now possess the education and have gained the experience to replicate that amazing and critically important experiment for the rest of your life. I was asked to share with you at the start of the ceremony some of the many achievements from the past year in the Faculty of Science. Instead, I want to share just one. Our greatest scientific experiment and achievement is you. It was a tremendous privilege and honor to have you as students, and we cannot wait to see what's next and to ce celebrate all that you will achieve and contribute through your careers and lives. Get ready, I have one last assignment for you. As you well know, science is a team sport, so too is life. By the end of the month, please make sure you've taken time to thank the team who supported you during your time at McMaster. Those are the faculty, grad students, and classmates who went above and beyond, your family and friends who gave you unconditional support and encouragement. I'd ask you to do it in person or pick up the phone. I don't think this is something you can do with DM or an Instagram post. I look forward to congratulating each of you in person during your post-convocation reception. The reception for all graduates and their guests is being held next door in the Hamilton Convention Center. Along with refreshments, you can step into one of our photo booths to document this final amazing stage in your scientific experiment, because we might just ask you to submit one last lab report. Now I would like to call upon our Chancellor, Dr. Suzanne Labarge, to deliver her welcoming remarks. Welcome, honored guests, staff, families, friends, colleagues, and faculty from McMaster University and Mohawk College, and most importantly, graduates. This is an exciting day for all of you who are graduating today, as well as for all those people who have supported you and stood behind you, and in many cases have had a key role in you being here today. You've achieved a great deal to get here, and you should all be very proud of your success and looking forward to what the future might bring. Congratulations, and enjoy the ceremony. My name is David Farrar. I'm the Provost and Vice President Academic of the University, and this morning, I have the great pleasure of acting as your Master of Ceremonies. I would like to welcome Dr. Patrick Dean, President and Vice Chancellor, to the podium, who will be presenting our honorary degree recipient. Thank you. 
Madam Chancellor, by the authority of the Senate of McMaster University, I have the honor to present Jennifer Bennett. A McMaster University alumna who earned her bachelor's degree in physical education in 1981, Rear Admiral, Admiral Jennifer Bennett was part of the Naval Reserve throughout her student career. After graduation, she completed an education degree at Queen's University and then began two distinct concurrent career paths, a civilian career as a teacher and school administrator and a military career as a reservist in the Canadian Armed Forces. A former head of Fernhill School in Oakville, Rear Admiral Bennett was previously a secondary teacher with both the Victoria School District and the Hamilton Wentworth Board of Education before becoming a teacher and director of athletics with the Glen Lyon Norfolk School in Victoria. Canada's first female Rear Admiral and senior ranking reserve officer Rear Admiral Bennett enrolled in the Naval Reserve in 1975 in HMCS Star in Hamilton, our city's legendary stone frigate, beginning a distinguished service career that includes commands of HMCS Malahat and the Naval Reserve Basic Recruit Training Detachment at Borden, Ontario. She served as Director of Reserves at the National Defence Headquarters in Ottawa before becoming Director of the Ottawa Detachment of the Canadian Defence Academy and the Director of Professional Development for Canadian Forces. She was the Director of Training and Education Policy and Project Director of the Defence Learning Network before her 2007 promotion to the rank of Commodore and appointment to the position of Commander of Canada's Naval Reserve. She was promoted to her current rank in 2011 when she became Canada's Chief of Reserves and Cadets. She has been the National Champion for Women in Defence, the National Capital Region Champion for Visible Minorities, and the Director General of the Canadian Armed Forces Strategic Response Team on Sexual Misconduct in support of Operation Honour. Since 2018, Rear Admiral Bennett has been the Director General of Litigation Implementation. In addition to her McMaster and Queen's degrees, Rear Admiral Bennett has earned a Master of Arts degree in Leadership and Training from Royal Roads University and is a graduate of the Canadian Forces Staff School, Canadian Forces Staff College, NATO School, and NATO Defence College. A member of McMaster's Alumni Gallery since 2016, Rear Admiral Bennett has received the Canada 125 Medal the Queen Elizabeth II Golden and Diamond Jubilee Medals, and an honorary doctorate from the University of Alberta. She has been named one of Canada's top 100 most powerful women, and in 2013 was promoted to commander in the Order of Military Merit, the ultimate level of our military's highest honor. Madam Chancellor, it is a privilege to present to you a Canadian Armed Forces trailblazer, an educator, and a member of the McMaster alumni family who has made us all proud of her exceptional service to our country. I ask that you confer upon Rear Admiral Jennifer Bennett the degree Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. Jennifer Bennett, by the authority of McMaster University Senate, I have the great pleasure to confer upon you the degree Doctor of Science Honoris Causa in McMaster University with all the rights and privileges pertaining to that degree. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, a pleasure. I'll get you to sign over here. I would now like to invite Dr. Bennett to deliver the convocation address.
Madam Chancellor, President Dean, honoured guests, graduates, family and friends. It is truly a privilege for me to be joining you today to receive an honorary degree and to address the graduating class. This is a very special homecoming for me to return to Mac, where the foundations of who I have be become began as an undergraduate student known as 7709486 and a graduate of the class of 81 in a program that was a precursor to the kinesiology degree that many of you are receiving today. I would never have predicted this when I received my degree 38 years ago, and I would like to thank the Chancellor and McMaster University for this very personal recognition and honour with special thanks to Dr. Audrey Hicks. I would also like to acknowledge and thank the great number of people who have supported and encouraged me and who share this moment with me today. My family and friends who are here today and also those who are with us in spirit. My coaches, mentors, teachers, professors and instructors who challenged me and nurtured my strengths to build resilience and confidence to face the unexpected and succeed. And to the students, colleagues, staff, and leaders with whom I've had the pleasure to work and to serve, I thank you all. At my convocation ceremony in the gym of the Iverwind Sports Complex on May 30th in 1981, yes, it was last century, I don't think I truly comprehended the huge significance of that milestone as I was too busy planning what, for what lay ahead. I didn't really think about the four incredible years I'd spent at Mac and what I had accomplished. So I encourage the graduates to take time today to celebrate and to thank those who helped you to get to this point and to enjoy this moment. This experience is not just about the marks on your transcript, although those do have an important impact on your future endeavors. You have mastered amazing life skills and made connections and friendships that will last for decades, even if you don't see each other for, number, for many years. And you will always be part of this special community. I know this firsthand because joining me today are some of my classmates who are lifelong friends with the common bond of our experience at Mac. While graduation marks a major turning point and considering what might not come next is exciting and also intimidating and a bit uncertain, don't rush to close this chapter and leave this behind. When you were growing up, I'm sure that you regularly asked, are we there yet? And wish the time would pass more quickly to get to special places or events, including today. And now that you're here, where do you go next? And how will you get there? Or how will you know where there is? The tools and technology that we have in our lives today are amazing. But sadly, there is no app for life yet. And GPS can't map out the shortest or best route to success. Nor can you simply say, hey, Alexa, I now have a degree, find me a job and a career I love. Or, Siri, what's next and how do I get there? Of course, you could work at developing these tools and you'd be a great candidate for a PhD here at McMaster or an honorary doctorate in the future. It's interesting that we use language like career path or ladder of success when the way ahead is rarely linear and paths aren't always clearly marked or easy to follow. This is true of almost everything in life and mapping things out seems like a great way to start, but plans and routes don't always go the way you think. You can learn a great deal from taking the path less traveled as an alternate route or taking the detour. And wrong turns along the way can lead to some incredible opportunities or great views and sights you might not have seen following the crowd or the trail map. At one of the MAC reunions for my class, it was amazing to see the diversity of experience and expertise and the variety of routes that we had all taken, all having started with the basic foundation that was the same. My personal journey has been a series of choices and decisions that weren't always in a straight line that led me to places and opportunities I had, hadn't considered or included in my original plan. One key turning point was in the spring I was in grade 12 when I was considering summer job options, and I was looking at how I could earn money for university. My preferred summer job option was to lifeguard at a local pool where they would actually pay me to get a tan and enjoy the summer weather. That sounded perfect to me, but then I was presented with an alternative that offered something completely different and also was way outside the box. 
Local reserve units had summer student programs that you could join for eight weeks of basic military training and activities. At the time, the military didn't have the same visibility or reputation with Canadians as it does today. And none of my friends were going to be doing this. My father was in the Naval Reserve, and I knew that he got to do interesting things and to travel extensively. So I thought, eh, how bad can this be? It's only eight weeks. And the pay was three or four times what I would have made at the pool. I had no intention of doing anything more than that summer program, and I'd certainly never given a military career any thought. Early mornings and following orders, not really my style. However, sometime during that summer, my attitude changed, and I started to see the range of opportunities, challenges, and possibilities that could come with this job. So I continued my training with the initial goal of continuing to make money for university, having an interesting part-time job that was completely different than my career plan of becoming a teacher. What started as a temporary summer job with no aspirations or goals led me towards incredible leadership opportunities that have taken me across Canada and around the world. I've had experiences that have challenged and pushed me beyond my limits, and I was given responsibilities and assignments that I never thought were possible or achievable, and many were things that had not been done before. I didn't set out to rise to a certain rank or position, and there weren't very many women in higher ranks, so I didn't see this as a long-term goal. I was just looking for something interesting to do, and I certainly found that and more. It wasn't always easy, but it has always been interesting and very rewarding. And because I didn't have a route mapped out, I also became a trailblazer. In every career field, there may be a typical path or a series of checks in the box, but things don't always go according to the plan. So you have to be creative and resilient. Sometimes a good idea or a quick solution turns into something amazing. Think back to Dr. Naismith, who was trying to, get, uh, trying to find a way to encourage exercise when he cut the bottom out of a peach basket and threw a ball through it. Go, Raptors, go. <laughs> if opportunities don't present themselves, go out and find them or make your own happen. You are in charge of your future. You never know what can happen to a simple or good idea. When asked about life or career lessons, many professionals comment that they said no to a lot of opportunities when starting out because they didn't think the jobs fit with their plan or their qualifications and experience. And many regretted not taking a chance to try something outside of their comfort zone. Sometimes you have to take a chance and make an opportunity fit for you rather than the other way around. In both my teaching and military careers, when there weren't jobs in my field, I explored other opportunities and tried to build my experience and expertise. It seems to have paid off, and I'm still doing that. With my background in physical education, I like the analogy that a career path should not be a ladder. It should be a playground climber or a jungle gym. Ladders only allow travel up or down, and there are limits to the number of people who can be on them at any time, and only one route to the top. There are many more ways to move along or climb up or down a climber. As Patty Sellers described to Sheryl Sandberg in her book, Lean In, jungle gyms offer more creative exploration and alternative routes. Everyone can find a path that suits them. On a jungle gym, with occasional dips, stops, detours, and even dead ends, you have multiple options. Plus, a jungle gym provides great views for many people, not just those at the top. On a ladder, most climbers are stuck trying to avoid being stepped on by the feet of the person above, and they end up staring at their backside. In my military career, my role as a leader and being a woman who's been a, been a trailblazer and champion has had a far greater reach and impact than my job performance. For me, one of the most powerful and rewarding aspects of my dual career careers has been the influence that I've had upon people. Not just those who I have taught or worked with directly, but many I've never met. You never know what people are taking note of through what I like to call silent mentoring. And there's great power in others seeing a route to success through what you are doing, and more importantly, who you are. Being referred to as a champion, advocate, or role model can be intimidating, but it's also incredibly rewarding and humbling and I encourage all of you to play that role. You've just finished an academic program that has challenged and changed you personally and professionally. You're full of good ideas and information and keen to get out into the world to get things done. But your success isn't only contingent on what you achieve, and it's not what you are known as, but what you are known for. The opportunities that lie ahead for you are exciting and endless and will come with challenges and obstacles, 
but overcoming adversity builds resilience, and you can learn more from failure than success, and the unexpected can lead to a whole new set of options that weren't in your original plan. You have infinite opportunities for amazing experiences if you stay curious and open to unexpected possibilities and make things happen. When I look back to the summer job choice I made 44 years ago and the decisions that followed, including choosing McMaster University for my undergrad, I could not have imagined being where I am now, nor could I have predicted the route that would bring me here or the range of personal and professional challenges that I've tackled. But as I rest near the top of the climbers and enjoy the view, I consider that my greatest accomplishments and legacy are to have been to show others what is possible to have opened doors to those who will follow, and to have contributed to and influenced the success of others, all while being true to myself, remaining open to being outside my comfort zone, and most importantly, maintaining my personal leadership style and a sense of humor. I wish all the graduates the best of luck in your future endeavors. I am humbled to have received this recognition, and I am honored and proud to be part of this graduating class and the McMaster community. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Bennett, for those, for those wonderful comments. I think she's given you some a very interesting perspective that life isn't a straight line. One of the privileges of being chancellor is that you get to grant the honorary degrees and it's, it's, it's very, in a very interesting process in that the deans and ourselves are looking for people that we think our students would appreciate and understand. People who have taken their education and used it either in their profession to provide incredible advancements in their field or in their communities and their society. And Dr. Ben is a wonderful example of somebody who's contributed enormously to the Canadian environment, and particularly for the advancement of women in the Naval Reserve in what we would probably call a male field. But more than that, what she symbolizes is what you can do with the base education. She used it to move in a variety of ways and used it to its best. And for that, we thank her enormously and are delighted to have her back here at McMaster. Thank you. President Dean will now come forward to present the graduands to our chancellor for admission to their degrees. Will the graduands please stand? <clears throat> Madam Chancellor, on behalf of McMaster University Senate, I present to you these candidates and those in absentia in order that you may confer the appropriate degrees upon them, and I bear witness that they are worthy and suitable. Graduands, by my authority and that of the McMaster University Senate, I have the great pleasure to admit those before me today and those in absentia to their individual degrees at McMaster University with all the rights and privileges pertaining to those degrees. My sincere congratulations to you all. Please be seated. Graduates, I now ask each of you to join me on stage so that the Chancellor and I may welcome you to the McMaster Community of Scholars.
Ladies and gentlemen, so that each graduate's name may be heard, it would be appreciated if during the presentation of the graduates, you would hold your collective applause to the end of each degree category. Thank you. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Doctor of Philosophy. James Vincent Marcaccio. Kaitlyn Mary Ann Samopolis. Joseph Daniel Weller. Daniel Ariaga. Wen Lin. Sean Michael McKenzie. Alnaz Has Abu Talibi. Steen Hansen. Emily Bremer. Denver Brown. Haley Elizabeth Cragness. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Science. Angela Bami Fufeng. Nicole McFarlane. Stephanie Perezin. Heather Jennifer Bond. Tinan Aras Pringle. Jessica Wu. Brittany Daniel Bullbrook. Shan Yuki Neg. Hector Domingo Orozco Perez. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Applied Science Honours. Monica Abdel Marse. Susan Andrea. Sakina Jusa Bayagora. Sulakia Mame Ya Adoma Bochi. Ryan Anthony James Bruni. Shelby Victoria Elizabeth Buntain. Daniela Grazia Butera. Alexandra Clark. Domenica Cortina. Catherine Hannah Chihun. Danielle Nicole Tadeo Di Giovanni. Hasimran Kawa Gotra. Natasha Hernandez Rivera. Bobby Isles. Vanessa Ray Kafia. Victoria Kent. Kelly Knoch. Michelle Kwan Lok Kao. Joyce Lay. 
Gary Manchun Leung. Jessica Megan Loiseau. Sana Malik. Emily Martin. Kenneth Austin Maskell. Alexandra Lee McBain. Vanessa Mercurio. Rachel Morden. Carolyn Teresa Navrot. Chelsea Christine Pacheco. Ashruti Patel. Nikita Patel. Taylor Lynn Payson. Nicholas Porritt. Leanne Marie Quirafu. Mariam Raymond. Monica Sadik. Divya Sharma. Maria Schweib. Anjana Shiva Shankar. Maria Sohail. Brittany Suresh Kumar. Alisa Marie Turner. Sarah K. Walker. Alexandra Nicole Vitek. Jing Yu Xu. Lisa Yan. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Science Honours. Sirad M. F. Abdi. Mohammed Abdul Aziz. Doris Maria Teresa Adao. Abdul Martin Olalakem Ederinto. Abir Adil. Niku Agay. Omar Al Awami. Shinta Sabasum Alam. Alexandra Jean Almeida. Victoria Matea Amorim. Ripley Elizabeth Antonacci. Megan May Archer. Abir Arif. Alicia Kaylin Arns. Akanksha Aurora. Sarah Elizabeth Asbury. Navrup Asi. Daniel Latif Awan. Anna Aksakova. Ramya Balakrishnan. Badis Balari. Natasha Mariam Baptiste Moseni. Carlos Alejandro Barba Bazan. Taylor Ann Barton. Harleen Basra. Anthony Bay.
Aikisha Beckwith. Nola Begea. Natalie Bellu. Paula Enrica Benassi. Simrat Benipal. Rebecca Benjamin. Gurjit Kaur Bamra. Rajat Bhargava. Olivia Claire Bidino. Victoria Ashley Blake. Cole Christopher Bowerman. Jacqueline Marion Boys. Molly Ann Bradford. Lakdeep Singh Brar. Madison Caitlin Brett. Susanna Berner. Claudia Lee Cadranel. Katrina Cantera. Christy Tsao. Matthew Tsao. Zi Hao Sao. Myla Carboni. Puyan Chamanian. Ryan Ho Wai Chan. Amy Chang. Shui Ke Chang. Christine Chen. Bonnie Chen. Felicia Capietta. Hazra Deidre Chowdhury. Brendan John Frederick Clark. Sarah Marie Correa. Tyler Corrivo. Tsui Zi Yan. Evan Tomo Tsvitkovich. Noro Dung Dam Takim. Daksh Data. Harshil Kaushik Datani. Mitchell Allen Davidson. Jessica Danielle Di Marinis. Jordan Gerald De Boer. Andrea Rochelle Delera Lagrada. Spencer Dennis De Vries. Rupinda Kaur Daliwal. Dushar Dawan. Rachel Ding. Cassandra Lily DeSanto. Yeah. Jennifer Doe. Jasdeep Dosanj. Matthew James Eitel. Joel El Hajar. Peter Elinas. Chirechi Chibuzu Obiomo Omenengo Nogu. Walai Fadi. 
Sohana Fahin. Nilo Ufar Farjam. Rabia Fatima. Julie Fayez. Emily Feng. Alesha Shimao Fernandez. Shireen Fikri. Jesse Ann Fraser. Brian Y. Fung. Leslie Lynn Galloway. Raydun Garapik. Maria Paula Garzon Muton. Camille Giuliano. Mohini Gounder. Lee Greenberg. Laura Ann Grennan. Gurkamal Kaur Grewal. Tanshang Gu. Mary Rose Gasseta Gundayeo. Harmit Gurum. Robert Gutgazel. Michael Hack. Lauren Hagstrom. Laura Jane Halliday. Kuong Han. Alicia Ann Hanman. Mina Hanna. Yuki Rika Harada. Ashlyn Harriet. Adrian Cole Hartman. Farah Zareen Hassan. Kathleen Hassler. Austin Hawkins. <laughs> Alison Isabel Marie Head. Veronica Laura Heal. Cameron George Hollands. Jason Holmes. Julie Patricia Marie Holmes. Rebecca Christine Hoff. Michael Huang. Ryan Philip Isabella. Elaine Genozo. Rebecca Janssen. Sonia Jean Francis Jarvie. Jethosan Jekathia Swaran. Shobigo Jekaswarotharan. Maher Gibrini. Colleen Diane Jimenez. Sydney Johnson. Alexandria Tamara Johnston. Samantha Jubran. <laughs> Alicia Maya Kaski. Adam Halaf. Safira Kher. Sabrina Hera. Himanshi Hurana. Minji Kim. Gloria Ko. 
Shin Ko. Marina Karabienikova. Margreta Johnny Yalda Kurel. Luke V. Krapes. Erika Ruth Kropf. Mu Chun Kuo. Florence Quan Ye Kwok. Rachel Tiffany Lai. Christy Lam. Matthew Lam. Caitlin Margareta Denbank Lamas. Brittany Wing Yin Lao. Matthew Richard Lozon. Robert William Lava. Brianne Caressa May Laverty. Michelle Francis Leahy. Denise Lee. Stephanie Lee. Shannon Celia Levinson. Xiaobing Lee. Lucy Liang. Jenny Lin. Kwang Jo Kathy Lin. Vivian Liu. Shu Yue Liu. Michelle Lee. Madison Taylor McGuire. Randy Tejwant Mahibar. Sashini Reshma Mahibir. Ayman Imran Malik. Jessa Marika Aleta Malar. Max Miguel Manglal Lan. Tanya Miriam Mani. Molly Morag Mackay. Eugene Andre Frederick Meck. Nicole Mary Bruna Meltzer. Amanda Amrita Muherho. Nilina Mohabir. Matura Mohanafas. Nikki Lynn Mokritsky. Valentina Montanari. Marco Morales. Claire Sarah Patricia Morrow. Brianna Alessandra Mortillaro. Alyssa Ellen Muller. Megan Muller. Maria Mohammed. Karen Mui. Sarah Mackenzie Muir. Melissa Nicole Muzati. Hansol Na. Nirusa Nadesar. Sayin Than Nagaswaran. Prathina Nagulendran Ranthan. Malak Angel Najar. Caitlin Nasralla. Tao Tu Hong Win. Taylor Diane North. Sarah Donna Shirley Norton. 
Sarah O'Dwyer. Foluso Omotayo Ogunjimi. Graham Oliver. Folasadi Malinda Olugundudu. Olu Wamu Muntoyeomo Opieleo Calebs. Lane Nielka Marie Osino. Jessica Otu Opi Apia. Ofore Vanessa Oware. Levy Christopher Page. Oya Pakal. Lindsay Page Palo. Janani Paramasivam. Alexandra Ann Parko. Aman Rakesh Patel. Anjali Patel. Yogisha Paskar Patel. Melissa Ann Paul. Anaida Paul Vasquez. Andrea Marisa Pellegrino. Christine Pam. Dan Pam. <laughs> Mina Pichtikova. <coughs> Connor Van Brummelen Pires. <laughs> Roberto Gabriel Pisani. <laughs> Nafhin Puvanendran. Carly Wade Wackenbush. Coral Rakowski. <laughs> Catherine Taylor Ramsey. Avnona Rashid. Ofera Razak. Nancy Ruby Ricalde. Samia Reza. Ilona Rosinska. Erin Christine Violet Rowe. Ashley Roy. Victoria Marie Rositsky. Nasasha Satska. Monica Sadri Geror. Shrayasi Saha. Kanika Saini. Emmanuel Harrison Sakaria. Caitlin June Salim. Sabra Khalid Salim. Sabrine Khalid Salim. Ravin Hari Samaru. Sarah Esther Samuel. Sarah Anna Samuel. Taryn Margaret Ticknor Sanders. Kaifa Dana Samriento. Rewethi Savunatharan. Connor Schmidt. Girish Alec Sisankar. Shinto Sentil Mohan. Olena Senyuk. Sherry Catherine Serrano. Krishna Shah. 
Krupalibhan Shah. Saida Mahnoor Shah. Mahin Shakil. Krishna Sharma. Michelle Sharma. Rahul Sharma. Yufeng Chi. Catherine Ann Silang. Mario Simonoski. Gagandeep Kaur Singh. Sumitha Shivagnan Arasundram. Nirja Skantharaja. Peyton Nicolette Rachel Smith. Karen Sobieshak. Hannah Song. Nicole Song. Shi Guang Song. Janahan Sri Ranjan. Bryce Start. Noah Max Stegman. Kaylee May Ellen Steinhausen. Jordan Thomas Stevenson. Andrew Stockford. Tyler James Summers. Muriel Rosa Tang. Jordan Thomas. Kaylee Ann Thorpe. Sagana Thushi Yenthan. Brittany Chloe Tin. Farah Naz Toshi. Sonia Therese Turvey. Rajveer Singh Ubhi. Brittany Ung. Upasana Upasana Panda. Roslyn Gapul Ui. Rushi Raj Sin Vansia. Anna Gabriela Vera Cruz. Gregory James Verkaik. Nafkiran Verma. Nikarika Verma. Prithi Vima Lendran. Kevin Y. Kaylin, Kaylin Nicole Welch. Ju Jun Wang. Kai Yuan Wang. Monica Miyuki Warner. Megan Jean Watson. Fiona Elizabeth Weaver. Patricia Zofia Wojcik. Ryan Matthew Wolf. Gregory Louis Woodward. Vince Wu. Yi Wu. Wan Tao Xiao. Grace Jimeng Yang. Cassie Yang. Chelsea Jane Young. Ruoi Bei Yu. Song Ning Yu. 
Kathy Jang. Shia Lok Shun Jang. Shui Yi Ju. Linda Xiao Xiang Ju. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Science Kinesiology Honours. Sandra Al Ali. Kira Allen. Austin Nathaniel Antonovich. Linda Rochelle Achila. Philip Arezina. Robert Douglas Armstrong. <laughs> Najim Atta. Mirai Ayub. Rifat Aziz. Carla Bucky. <laughs> Ashley Amanda Barton. Jenna Bathgate. Dior Bektashi. Katarina Nazario Belem. Camila Ben Masayud. Soon meet Sonny Bular. Anissa Boland. Nicole Ann Bomben. Emma Francesca Bonafiglia. Madison Anita Christie Borkowski. Marina Potrosh. Sarah Burke. Jameson Tyler Buck. Ashley Patricia Birch. David Anthony Carno. Yifan Sao. Jennifer Chan. Michelle Victoria Chiladurai. Angela Chen. Stephanie Chung. Leon Chi. Rebecca Jane Conrad. Molly Hong Rose Cowles. Elena Christina Crawford. Chiara Ann Louise Curry. Eviana Carino Cosimano. Sarah Marie Da Silva. Jamie Ricky Dan. Kristen Taylor DeMelo. Maya Dagan. Jenna Santino Di Donato. Ian John Diffie. Alan David Dabitsky. Sharif Yusuf El Manyawi. Roslyn Eng. Noah Erskine. Connor Ashton Feichuk. Montana Fisher Shotton. Matthew Fliss. Paige Rebecca Foxcroft. Laura Odette Canario Gelovich. 
Prabhav Gogna. Carly Summer Guernard. Christopher Gupta. Nera Hachi Kadunic. Brian Gareth Haig. Bethany Hamilton. Madeline Grace Harding. Linnea Marilyn Sands Harper. Kirsten Alexandra Harvey. Saina Hashimi. Jesse Joseph Horvat. Ashkan Hausmand. Amanda Huang. Jennifer Ann Hutter. Anna Maria Josipa Ilicic. Nicole Tanya Ivanu. Julian Patrick Yashanovsky. Gunit Kak. Evangelo Kerkelos. Romaine Knight. Kevin Don Coase. Athena Kutras. Juliana Nicole Kurilik. Louise Angela Lake. Bethany Tse Sumlan. Nina Lamberti. Noah Daniel Lane. Alyssa Marie Lee. Marissa Brittany Lee. Yoni Levin. Alan Lee. Christopher Michael Loma. Jack Aaron Lowe Carbell. Michael Thomas Andrew Luchak. Erica Dang Lee. Hugo Ma. Colby William McLean. Callum John Donald McClay. Monica Mansour. Sarah Adele Martin. Samantha Angela Martina. David Thomas McCullough. Claudia Marie McDonald. Amanda McKildreth. Sean Randall McKellar. Christina Marie McLaughlin. Engi Ashraf Fak Mahani. Alexander Matthew Mello. Sierra Nicole Meranti. Celine Meti. Lauren Irina Minkiewicz. Christina Mircheta. Miret Munir. Amanda Murphy. Michael Nakla. Haley Ng. Veronica Ann Niemczyk. Julie Marie Panza. Alison Park. Luca Perron. Erin Pent. 
Alexander Julian Perrault. Aaron Mackenzie Perrault Laird. Patrick Nicholas John Pettigrew. Shania Alexandra Pickett. Alina Provad. Sarah Navid Qureshi. Anya Rahimi. Roshni Ravi. Matthew Wei Chi Hei Henry Richardson. Amber June Rogers. Alesha Rose Piera Roman. Stephen Murray Rush. Catherine Taylor Samid. Krista Alexandra Sebastiani. Amy Lynn Sechek. Haley Noel Sivigny. Marium Shahana. Devin Brianne Shepherd. Caitlin Hazel Sherry. Carissa Sinhe Sue. Keaton Rycroft Smee. Christian Anthony Smith. Robin Teresa Sopotka. Riley Sparks. Katie Marie Svoboda. Sarah Tiana Svoboda. Mohammad Reza Tavakoli. Abanub Tavadrus. Jugraj Tour. Henry Tran. Vanessa Wei Triu. Shivam Tripathi. Philemon Sang. Laura Nicole Valois. Chaitanya Vazir. Amanda Clara Vetsesi. Sangyi Wang Chuk. Logan Claire Weigel. Blair April White. Micah Justice Witt. <laughs> Samantha Rose Workman. Megan Wertel. Tarek Yunus. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Science Kinesiology. Matthew James Kostuch. <laughs> Kelvin Lee. <laughs> Ibrahim Mohammed. <laughs> Wyatt Alexander Wepler. <laughs> Joshua Yusuf Tawadros. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Science. Shahzaib Anwar. Nathan William Lofthouse.
Let's give one, round, one last round of applause to all our newest graduates. I would now like to introduce Mr. Jenuhan Siranjan, a graduate of the degree Bachelor of Science in Psychology, Neuroscience, and Behavior, who will be delivering the valedictory address. Good morning, fellow graduates, distinguished members of the faculty, President Dean, Chancellor Labarge, Dr. Farrar, Rear Admiral Bennett, honored guests, family, and friends. And I'm not sure what time it is out in Oakland, but good morning, Nick Nurse. Good morning, Fred Van Vliet. Good morning, Norman Powell. Good morning, Sergi Baca. Good morning, Mark Gasol. Good morning, Pascal Siakam. Good morning, Kyle Lowry. And of course, good morning to the most fun guy in the nation, Kawhi Leonard. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's get that win tonight. My name is Jana Hanser Engine, and it is truly an honor and a privilege to represent today's graduates as valedictorian of the Faculty of Science, class of 2019. Tuesday, September 8th, 2015. Pretty monumental day in our lives, and not just because it was Stephen Colbert's first day as host of The Late Show. No, that day marks the first of our undergrad, the start to four incredible years of new lifelong friendships, a few sleepless nights here and there, and probably just as many laughs and tears, because after all, every action must have an equal and opposite reaction. Today may feel like it marks the end of an era for many of us, but I think it's a little more than that. Today is a celebration of all our accomplishments, big and small. Each of us is here because we did it. We got through the countless midterms, labs, and exams in mostly one piece. We became a part of the McMaster and Hamilton communities in every which way. Seriously, find me any club or group on campus without a science student in it. We took Thode by storm and made it our collective stomping grounds during exam season. And I hate to break it to the engineers, but that's Mac science turf now. <laughs> we almost made it to the 830s. It's okay, it's okay, we tried, we tried. <laughs> and of course, we didn't do it alone. As the saying goes, it takes a village to raise a child, or in our case, grumpy, hungry, caffeinated, stressed out university students. Whether it was your professors, TAs, research supervisors, or friends, we've all had someone or a group of people who made your time at Max Special. These are the people we turn to whether we and I quote this from an email I sent to my thesis supervisor, Dr. Schmidt, about a week before my final thesis was due, were hopelessly lost as to what to do. <laughs> or we just needed some time away from work to watch an episode of Brooklyn Nine-Nine or get a quick pump at the pulse. Un unless it's leg day, of course, because we don't, we don't do that. I, I, I said that specifically because I wanted to see the reaction on all the kinesiology students' faces, so that one's for you guys. <laughs> The list of people that has contributed to our being here today is probably longer than any module we'll ever watch, and yes, I am including Cell Bio. But while we're here, I specifically want to talk about three. The first person is who you once were. About four or five years ago, you took a leap of faith and made the decision to come to McMaster to pursue a degree in science. You knew it wasn't going to be easy, but that didn't stop you. To me, that's true bravery. And then you took the challenge one step further. We're in a room today with students from not one or two, but 13 science specializations and programs. And uh, while we're on the topic, I just want to give a quick shout out to my own program, AP and B. Yeah. You guys, you know what this means, right? We're a science. Yep. <laughs> the path we took is something we should all be very proud of because it shows our willingness to follow our passion and take charge of our own future. That's something no one can ever take away from us. The second person is who you are now, and I promise you the glow up is real. Four years older, a couple Motown nights under your wing, and probably having eaten a bit more midnight pinks and lava pizza than we should have, but here all the same. I'm sure many of us have looked back at pictures from first year and thought, oh gosh, is that what I used to look like? And I'm not just saying that, I've got the student card here to remind me of that every day before exams. Uh, please don't, don't zoom in. Um, <laughs> still, as uh, unappealing as this picture may be, I still believe my greatest achievement thus far has not been losing it before my finals, so yeah. 
But the changes we've gone through aren't just physical. We've become critical thinkers, determined workers, and persistent advocates for what we believe. Now, I'm sure you can all guess who the last person is, who you're going to be. And let's be honest, this is the person we're all probably worried about the most. We're about to take our first real step into a world where people are going to tell us that we're wrong when we know the research says otherwise. We're going to meet people who doubt us, and in turn, we may doubt ourselves. But who said it has to be that way? I think it's safe to say that, as Dr. McDonald said earlier, we should consider ourselves scientists. And that title means we have a responsibility to ourselves and to our communities to become the people who make our world a brighter world. Because we didn't work this hard to sit quietly while rainforests are torn down, people are exploited, and our planet is destroyed beyond repair for those who come after us. We didn't invest ourselves in making our communities better or put in all those hours towards advancing research so just a few people could be helped, but so that all people from all walks of life could prosper through the progress of science. And I know it sounds scary. The world is changing, and our generation will no doubt face a whole new set of challenges that no one has ever seen before. But the person we're going to be is someone who's prepared for these challenges. The three people I've talked about so far represent things about each of us that brought us here. Our bravery, bravery, resilience, and determination in the face of change. And while we have gone through and will continue to go through many changes for the rest of our lives, there's one thing that's always going to be the same. We are McMaster Science. Thank you. Thank you, Jaina Han. Uh, President Dean will now present the President's Award for Outstanding Contributions to Teaching and Learning and the President's Award of Excellence in Student Leadership. I'll begin with the President's Award for Outstanding Contributions to Teaching and Learning. Uh, would Dr. Daniel Goldreich please come forward? Dr. Daniel Goldreich is an associate professor in the Department of Psychology, Neuroscience, and Behavior. In his teaching, Dr. Goldreich evokes wonder, encourages exploration, and facilitates discovery in neuroanatomy and neurophysiology for his students. He seeks to create magical educational experiences where students remain highly engaged, even through a three-hour night class. Beginning each lecture with neuroscience puns, he creates a learning environment that inspires imagination, critical thinking, and exploration through sensory demonstrations and brain teaser exercises. He encourages probing questions and interaction through innovative stump the prof and delve deeper extra credit opportunities. Dr. Goldreich's impact and engagement with his students is evidenced by the high competition involved to become part of his teaching team as neuroscience consultants. These neuroscience consultants are volunteer undergraduate tutors that work closely with Dr. Goldreich and his graduate TAs to effectively guide students towards their own paths of discovery. His pyramidal mentorship approach inspires professional, academic, and personal leadership and development. Beyond the classroom, Dr. Goldreich has been instrumental in shaping the broader curriculum and program development. Most notably, he worked towards the development and approval of an honors BSc neuroscience program administered jointly with the Department of Biology. This innovative new program reflects his passion for multidisciplinary science education and components to promote wonder, exploration, and discovery in its students. Dr. Goldreich has been a recipient of both the MSU Pedagogical Innovation Award in 2013-14 and the MSU Excellence in Teaching Award in 2015-16. He inspires his colleagues to continuously evolve and create a world of mysteries, challenges, and, th and thrills for their students. He inspires his students to be curious, brave, and passionate, and is a most deserving recipient of the President's Award for Outstanding Contributions to Teaching and Learning. 
Daniel, congratulations. Thank you. Very well done. Thank you. Fantastic. There you go. I'll take the photo here. And now, turning to the President's Award of Excellence in Student Leadership, would Senthu, Senthil Mohan come forward, please? <laughs> Senthu Senthil Mohan is a new graduate with a Bachelor of Science degree in Psychology, Neuroscience and Behavior who was a member of the McMaster Students' Union's Student Representative Assembly. She was a co-leader of the Faculty of Science Caucus, a member of the MSU's University Affairs Committee, and a representative to the IT Student Affairs Committee. She also co-authored a number of MSU policy papers related to issues as diverse as sexual violence prevention, student finances, and racial, cultural, and religious equity. Cynthia has been a science and math tutor with the McMaster Science Society and coordinated China Rama activities for the Faculty of Science. She was also a senior Welcome Week representative for the faculty. As the campus events co-chair for Humanity First McMaster and then as co-president of the organization, Cynthia guided Humanity First to the Club of the Year Award in the Social Issues Division as the club's team of approximately 30 student volunteers orchestrated humanitarian projects ranging from vocational programming in West Africa to local food drives to providing emergency homeless shelters in Toronto. A volunteer swim instructor with Swimability, where she worked with children with disabilities, Cynthia was also a volunteer with the McMaster Children's Hospital. Congratulations, Cynthia. Congratulations, Daniel and Sindhu. May I now introduce Saruja Nataraja, a graduate from the Bachelor of Science Honors Class of 2018 and a representative of the McMaster Alumni Association, who will now deliver the Alumni Association Address. Chancellor Labarge, President Dean, Vice President Armstrong, award winners, honorees, Mohawk and McMaster faculty, fellow alumni, guests, and especially members of the class of 2019. When I was an undergraduate student, my friends and I had a pact that each of us would attend each other's convocation ceremonies. Unfortunately for me, each of my friends graduated in different years from different faculties, which meant by the time I completed being a student here, I had attended six McMaster convocations. And this will be my seventh. Convocation has easily become one of my favorite events here at McMaster. And it has little to do with the borrowed gowns and the long-winded speeches, such as the one I'm about to give, and the conferring of degrees. But rather, it has everything to do with what the culmination of what all those events represents which is a celebration of a milestone. Crossing the stage marks one of the most significant changes in your life. You are moving from your career as a student to a career as a professional, or from being an undergraduate student to being a graduate student. Or maybe you're trading the goals and routines of university for something more free form and personal. We all experience the graduation transition in our own way. No doubt, there are many more transitions ahead of you as you move through the stages of life. But what won't change is the experiences you had here while earning your degree. McMaster will always be a part of you, and you will always be a part of this community. At times, the connection will feel strong, and other times, it'll take a backseat gracefully to other priorities. But when you do want to turn that lifelong relationship into an activity, a social media connection, volunteering, or any dozens of other kinds of opportunities, your alumni association will be there for you. You can read about McMaster, fellow McMaster alumni, and classmates in Mac, 
the news magazine for alumni, either in print or, in your case, probably digitally. Or stay updated through our monthly e newsletter, Maroon Mail. In Touch magazine from Mohawk will keep you up to date with the news of the college. Check out the Mac alumni site on Medium and read about your fellow grads' real lives after Mac. Learn from career newsletters, Insight, and join the Mac and Mohawk alumni communities on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. You are all now members of Mac 10, with programming specifically geared to the needs of graduates within the first 10 years after graduation, including your very own alumni career counselor. Whether you're looking for assistance in getting that first job, or as you navigate the next steps in your career, the Mohawk and McMaster Alumni Associations have a number of resources, events, and programs to help. Your association even offers things you probably didn't even realize, like great deals on home and auto insurance, health, and dental coverage. And if you think you're moving away from Hamilton and you're gonna cut your connection, that's just not the case. If you do your part by keeping your contact information up to date on your alumni profile, you'll receive invitations and notices about events that's taking place near where you live. Alternatively, with online networking events, mentoring, and webinars, you can always make an alumni connection virtually. When you leave here today, I know it's likely that nothing I've just said will stick with you. It will all be a blur, similar to how some of you are blurring to me right now. But as a recent graduate myself, I do have a couple tips for you. I'd encourage you to wear your school pride and always show, share where you went to school. You'll make some great connections with your fellow marauders around the world. Interestingly enough, I just moved to Kingston, Ontario, and I didn't know a single person in the town. On my very first day, I wore my McMaster hat and was walking by the waterfront when a girl had stopped me, introduced herself, and said she had went to McMaster as well. We ended up grabbing lunch, and she became one of my very first friends at Kingston. So do take a minute to check out the alumni website, read the emails, follow the posts, and learn what your new status as an alumni can offer you. And whenever that day comes, when you're curious and you're ready to connect, we'll be there. Members of the class of 2019, congratulations on your convocation, and welcome to the Alumni Association. We are very proud to have you join the Mac and Mohawk alumni family, and I look forward to seeing all that you accomplish in the years ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Sharuja. I now invite Dr. Dean back to the podium to deliver his president's address. Uh, Madam Chancellor, Dr. Bennett, distinguished colleagues, graduates, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Like many of the rituals by which we order our lives, convocation is a combination of the private and the public. Today, graduates, we are celebrating your individual achievements as well as our collective renewal through those achievements and through the futures that you will all go on to make for yourselves. Convocation is also a form of therapy in that it is intended to give acknowledgement, focus, and expression to our awareness of change, of the life transitions which all of you are experiencing right now, and also of the broader shifts in our society and culture, and those implicate us all. One phase of life is ending for you and another is beginning perhaps still within McMaster if you're planning further study here, or as is likely the case for most of you beyond our university. While I said convocation helps give focus to our awareness of change, that's not to say that it necessarily simplifies moments like this. After all, while the end of one phase can be a relief, it can also occasion a sense of loss or even grief and while we may approach the beginning of the next phase with excitement, that will also likely come with an admixture of nervousness and sometimes fear. The combination of emotions on a day like this will be different for all of us. Now, I'm an English professor going through changes of my own. As some of you may know, I leave McMaster University at the end of this convocation season. 
So perhaps you will indulge me in a brief poetic moment. I want to read you some lines from a poem by T.S. Eliot. The poem is called Little Gidding. It is the last of his four quartets published during the Second World War in September 1942. It is a riff, although Eliot would probably never have called it that, on a saying which Mary Queen of Scots had embroidered on her royal uh, clothing while imprisoned in England prior to execution. En ma fin, gite mon commencement. In my end is my beginning. Nearly 400 later, years later, also in London, England, and with the massive destruction of successive German bombing raids all around him, T.S. Eliot amplified Queen Mary's motto in this way. What we call the beginning is often the end, and to make an end is to make a beginning. The end is where we start from. These, I think, are helpful words on an occasion like this. While it is tempting at times of change to mourn the loss of something past or coming to an end, it is important to keep your focus on the future, however unknown or unknowable that may be. For Mary, Queen of Scots, imprisoned and under threat of execution, the future was imagined as a Christian afterlife. For T.S. Eliot, thinking about Nicholas Farrar's 17th century religious community at Little Gidding in the context of wartime Britain, it was that and more. It was a social and cultural resurgence animated by belief and unified by transcendent values. To make an end is to make a beginning. That is our theme for today, and we should all embrace it however differently we see ourselves starting out, and however contrasting are our hopes and ambitions for the future. Acceptance of change, along with the constant process of renewal it implies, is fundamental to success, whether for individuals like you and me, or for institutions like McMaster, in which we have jointly found a place these last several years. Change drives us forward to challenge ourselves and to scale even greater heights. Now, it's not as if we have much choice in the matter. The Greek philosopher Heraclitus is reputed to have observed that change is the only constant in life. But we do have a choice about how we respond to that change, whether we will treat ends as beginnings or merely as ends. And no less a thinker than Confucius has pointed out the link between the acceptance of change and human personal growth. He's reputed to have said, and this is a quote, they must often change who would be constant in happiness or wisdom. But last point is an important one for all of us as a university family. Despite the fact that universities have been around for over 900 years and are seen as one of the most stable human institutions in the West, they have not been immune to change. Indeed, all the teaching, learning, research, and discovery that happens in a place like McMaster is premised on the restless pursuit of truth. To be successful, the university must always be changing, developing, and creating new beginnings of one kind or another. In the nine years I've been at McMaster, I've been witness to constant and far-reaching change. The most obvious example has been alterations to the physical fabric of the place, of course, the demolition of Wentworth House, the construction of L.R. Wilson Hall, the expansion of studio art and engineering experiential education facilities, groundbreaking for the Peter George Center for Living and Learning, opening of the David Braley Health Sciences Center downtown, and construction of the outdoor indigenous meeting circle, to name only a few. And mention of experiential learning points to that major shift in pedagogy that has occurred during the last decade, moving your experience 
towards more technology-enabled, self-directed, and community-engaged ways of learning. And the university has transitioned overall into a more vital engagement with its local and global communities in recognition of our mission to advance human and societal health and well-being. And so substantive has been that shift that our university was recently ranked second in the world for our contribution to the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations. That is indeed something to be proud of. So listing off these changes gives me pause to reflect on the speed with which time passes. I wonder whether you feel as I do, as if it was only yesterday that you arrived at McMaster. But think about this. What we're celebrating today is, for most of you, the successful completion of a project to which you've devoted approximately 20% of your lives so far. The nine years I have spent here account for the same percentage of my adult life. It has been time very well spent, I hope you will agree, but it has been spent nevertheless. And the task today is to ponder the time ahead of you and to consider the thoughtful and, I hope, joyful ways in which you might use it, making use, I hope, of all the skills and experience you've worked so hard to acquire during your time at McMaster. It is interesting that we talk about our relation to time using the same language that we often use for commerce. We spend time, sometimes we invest it, and sometimes the investment pays off, we say. Now, there's a witty rejoinder to this uh, in one of the very first self-help guides ever written. It's a book called How to Live on 24 Hours a Day by the English author Arnold Bennett, published in 1910. It would probably horrify scientists, as you will discover as I explain a bit. This book includes a variety of advice for living life to the full. But Bennett notes this, the time is indeed a commodity, uh, but a commodity of a very special sort. The supply of time, he says, is truly a daily miracle. You wake up in the morning, and lo, your purse is magically filled with 24 hours of the unmanufactured tissue of the universe of your life. It is unstealable, and no one receives either more or less than the 24 hours you receive. Perhaps the best thing about time, he notes further, is that you don't have access to credit. You cannot draw on the future, he says. It is impossible to get into debt. You can only waste the passing moment. You cannot waste tomorrow, he says. It is kept for you. Tomorrow is kept for you. My hope is that you can all make a success of tomorrow and of the new beginning and the new life that you're about to embark on. While this ceremony represent, represents an ending for you and also for me, it is also an ending for our esteemed chancellor, Dr. Suzanne Labarge. Dr. Labarge has served McMaster with great distinction for the last six years as our 18th chancellor, and has presided at all of our convocation ceremonies during that time, as well as acting as our most prominent university volunteer. These spring convocations are the last ceremonies that Chancellor Labarge will preside at. And I didn't want to end any ceremony without recognizing her service and extending our thanks for all that she has done. So there are many of us saying goodbye. Valediction is always difficult. But as Winnie the Pooh is believed by some to have said, how lucky we are to, believe, to be leaving something that makes the goodbye hard. My very best wishes to you all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, President Dean, and congratulations to the class of 2019. As one of those 200,000 alumni that you've now joined, I'm really looking forward to see where you end up. But I must say, 
I have enormous hopes. And the reason being is, first, as I listened to your dean this morning, and she talked about what it took to become a good science, scientist, I went, wait a second, that's what it takes to be a good person, a good employer, a good employee, anything you want to do, those skills are so transferable. But more importantly, as President Dean mentioned, I, you know, I've been here for six years, that's somewhere around 70-something convocations. And every year as I watch the graduating class, I get more and more impressed and more and more optimistic about the future. So I thank you all for that. But I must admit, as I stand here today, I'm really envious of you. Now, I gotta say, I don't really wanna start over, but you're starting at a really good spot. You're coming out of one of the best universities with incredible skills, and you're going into a world that has all kinds of opportunities. And so the future is open to you. Now, the one thing that wasn't mentioned, and I thought, you know, as our honorary doctorate talked about the way you get to things, is the role that luck plays. Early in my career, somebody said to me, where you get to is 90% hard work and 10% luck. We can't control our luck. How we use our luck is up to us. That unexpected experience that you get that leads you in another direction, or as in my case, spending time with a family friend who said, you know, I think you'd like business an awful lot more than you'd like academia, and sent me on a track that has led to my being here and probably in the right place here. So all I can do as I wish you congratulations and best wishes is to wish all of you the best of luck. Now I also want to thank Dr. Dean for what he has done for us over the last eight years. My time with him, I've seen his, the enormous effort he's put into improving the student environment making the student experience here. For him, the focus of the university is students. And I think we've all benefited from it, and so I hope you will join me in thanking him for this. Thank you. I was so excited about having finished in time so you guys could watch the Raptors game, I forgot the announcements. <laughs> All right, I have a few announcements. A reception will be held for the graduates and their guests in Hamilton Convention Center, Wentworth Room B and C, immediately following the ceremony. Finally, I would ask that you please remain standing at your seats until the academic procession and the graduates have left the hall. Please join now in the singing of our national anthem, after the singing of the anthem, this convocation stands adjourned. <laughs>